Hello and welcome to a simple way to a faster triathlon or why eating and drinking is so important. Um, there's a huge time savings to make at Ironman in particular, half Ironman if you get this wrong. Um, could also be the difference between finishing and not finishing. So we're looking at how much water you need to drink, how much fluid you need to replace and what you sweat. Electrolytes, vital, particularly sodium, with eating and drinking enough. And some very simple things you can do to make sure you do eat and drink enough when you're training and racing. I'm going to go into why eating carbohydrates will make you faster. I'm going to go through predicting how much you need to eat and drink. I'm going to go through what you need to do to practice it. We're also going to give you the skills to have a plan B. One, part one is about uh, about the water and about hydration is, is more than just plain old H2O, more than just plain water. Um, there's a few things that we need to uh, consider and to think about. Um, we lose water three main ways, um, sweating, urine and breathing. Um, urine um, should be a clear to a pale yellow colour. Urine after a long training session or a race is a dark yellow, you've not drunk enough. Urine is brown, that's not good. You're breaking down muscle, you're damaging your kidneys. Um, you don't want to be uh, seeing brown urine at all and you may end up needing medical treatment if that's the case so let's avoid that let's go for the clear pale yellow breathing uh, breathing through your mouth will lose more water than through your nose at the effort levels that we're doing in a race it's very difficult to breathe through your nose continuously your, your nose will often be running um, you're not going to get enough air through that flow through that way but we're not going to worry too much about uh, losing water through breathing. The biggie is sweat. And what we want to do is to be able to work out how much you sweat in different weather conditions. Now that's relatively simple, it's regular sweat tests. Wear yourself, no clothes on before you go out. You know how much you water you take, you know how much you, you bring back, how much you've drunk. You know, you weigh yourself again when you get back, you get no clothes on. A Couple of little bits of maths, it's fairly straightforward. You can see how much you sweated. Now, I would do that in different temperatures. Um, you're going to sweat a lot more if it's 32 degrees than if it's 14 degrees. Um, similarly with the humidity, if it's a really hot, muggy day, that will affect the way your body is coping with heat. So ideally, go out in a range of humidities, but make a note of the, the humidity, make a note of the temperature, but also whether it's sunny or cloudy. It's a really sunny day, sun's beating down on your back and you're exposed all day you're going to be heating up just by the direct radiance of the sun you're going to be sweating more you're going to be hotter that way than if you're going through a nice shaded woodland so the weather the sun and the cloud also very important just to make a note um, and i like to use a spreadsheet it's it's a fairly simple thing you could just write it down on a bit of paper what i want you to do is, is test in those different weather conditions Write it down, work it out, and then when we need to for a race, you've got that information there uh, and we can work out the uh, race day plan from that. Dehydration is serious. 2% um, dehydration, not a lot, when your performance starts to be affected. So that's why earlier on in the summary I said, we have to replace most of the, the water that we lose, most of the sweat. It doesn't have to be all of it. We can cope with 1%, 1.5%, not a problem. Above 2%, that's when we start to, to slow down. But 5% or at 5%, your performance is down by about a third, 30%. Now that could easily be the difference between finishing an Ironman, getting timed out, not making the 17 hour cutoff. And that's 5% dehydration. 8%, you're likely to be in the medical tent. You're gonna be seeking, looking, looking for an ambulance. You're gonna need some kind of drip or some, some help to replace that fluid. 10 to 15 percent yeah this is that it could kill you that, that's serious um i'm hoping anyone who's watching this video is never going to be near those and certainly not after watching them um but this is why we worry about dehydration it's not just uh you know slow down a little bit or i need to have a big drink when i finish no there's some serious health implications there's some serious performance implications if you get this wrong so the effects of dehydration most obvious one you've got less blood um, just over half of your blood is water. Um, and if you're dehydrated, you're going to have less of that water. You're going to have less blood. And we need that blood to go around the body, particularly to the muscles. It's supplying all the nutrients that we need. Um, all the oxygen, all the energy 
that's going around to not just your muscles but every other organ in your body biggie is you're going to sweat less and particularly if it's a hot day you've been sweating more so you've been getting yourself dehydrated because of that a lot of the liquid part of the water from the sweat is, is transported via your bloodstream makes sense it's going everywhere so if there's less liquid in your blood there's less liquid for you to sweat less water for you to sweat you're not sweating as much you're going to get hotter your core temperature is going to get hotter and then other things are going to start going wrong there if you're dehydrated your muscles actually will use more glycogen glycogen will come to later on that's the energy store in your body the carbohydrate store in your body um, and it's a precious store it's a limited store we don't want to use too much of that dehydrated you will lose more and for me this is a biggie if you're dehydrated your brain does not work as well you don't remember things as well which means ultimately you make bad decision making now that worries me if you're on the open road and you're cycling and there's cars going past at 30 40 50 60 miles an hour flying past you're going down a steep twisty bend on the road and um, you're going to make bad decisions you're much more likely to have some kind of crash or because you're a little bit dehydrated something that's easily easily fixed but that last one worries me that that can have catastrophic effects so most people will sweat 300 mils to about a litre and a half an hour um, I'm towards the top end of that I'm about 1.2 litres probably most people are going to be 700 mils to a litre litre and a bit that's the range and it's a huge range I mean that's five times difference so it is very very individual it just shows the importance why you need to go and do your own sweat test so test yourself test yourself regularly so going through to a half iron event it's going to be somewhere between four maybe seven or eight hours uh, for a lot of people um, you're going to be sweating anywhere between 1.2 liters and 10 liters during the race we're going to more than double that for Ironman because you could be out there for 16 17 hours at the top end so these are huge volumes so it is very very important that you work out your own sweat rate now for a 70 kilo athlete two percent dehydration is two percent of your body weight is what we're looking at that's just under a liter and a half um, and that's where performance will start to start to suffer so that's about two bottles two bite bottles five percent dehydration where your performance is down by a third it's three and a half liters that's about five bottles worth and eight percent where you're looking at medical tent 5.6 liters now if you compare that to how much you're actually going to be sweating during a half iron man certainly in an iron man those figures are well within the range of how much you're going to sweat so you have to be drinking and you have to be drinking consistently during the race um, um, the aim of this is to make everyone faster and safer a bit of bonus maths if anyone's interested you're going to sweat more in the afternoon because it's likely to be hotter in the afternoon uh, when the weather improves a lot of triathlons a lot of Ironman are going to be starting at six seven o'clock in the morning where it's cool so those first couple of hours on the bike unlikely you're going to be sweating as much as you are going to be in the last two hours of the bike and when the run is the heat of the day will stay there for longer the sun's still out in the afternoon go and look at the weather forecast see what the weather is at eight o'clock in the morning ten o'clock lunchtime mid-afternoon and then plan your sweat rate through that so what should you drink well there's a few options plain water um, electrolyte drink or there's a huge range of energy drinks out there that you can get at supermarkets online specialist running cycling shops triathlon shops there'll be tea and coffee there's usually cola of some kind at the end of an iron man maybe even red bull um, and on a cooler race they'll often put on hot soup um, so there's, there's other options for getting your uh, getting the water in plain water brilliant find it everywhere every race will have it you can go and buy a bottle cheaply at most stores you can find a tap got a tap at home um, there's lots of places in say the Pyrenees or the Alps where there are um, drinking water springs in in the small villages you can fill it your bottle when you're on a, um, a ride there's places in the UK where you can fill up a water bottle for free so yeah very very easy to great at rehydrating cons no energy in it there's no electrolytes the electrolytes that can be a problem if you drink too much plain water and you're not replacing the salt like you're sweating we'll come on to that again later these are something called hyponatremia low sodium 
and that can be be very serious so water not containing any electrolytes yes yeah, can be a little bit of a problem what i've done though is i've put that on the pro side because providing no energy and no electrolytes you know what you're getting it makes it very simple and i am firmly of the belief that we should separate out the water part the energy part and the electrolytes part because we don't necessarily need particularly with the energy and the water we don't necessarily need the same amounts all through the race or want the same amount all through the race so that that all comes to the end of of part one we've gone through the sweat rates we've gone through the importance of water and why we want to avoid dehydrating and if you anyone watching this video does one thing i'd love you to do a sweat test but it takes an extra two minutes three minutes tops do that in a number of different weather conditions a number of different temperature conditions when we're going out on a longer ride or you're going on a race you can then work out what you need to be drinking if you want more information on sweat tests go and have a look at the new section on the pennine endurance website There's loads of uh, um, information on how to perform the sweat test there and i'll put a link in the uh, notes below um, thank you very much for watching part one uh, i'll put links for part two which is all about the electrolytes thank you very much